Joining me live now is Middle East specialist and former Australian ambassador to Lebanon, Ian Palmiter. Ian, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. As we just heard, Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong set to visit Israel and the West Bank next week. What messages is she likely to give, do you think, to Israel and the Palestinian Authority? I think to start with, she'll emphasise that uh, she speaks to uh, to Israel as a friend and uh, Australia over many years has been a, a proven and very good friend of, of Israel. And uh, But she will say that good friends uh, try to give good advice to, uh, to, to, to their friends when they are in, in difficulty. And she will say that Australia fully defends uh, Israel's right to defend itself. We fully accept that. But it will, uh, I think Penny Wong will also say that the way in which Israel defends itself uh, really matters. Um, I don't think she's going to get on to the uh, South African case. Uh, that will be more or less in abeyance by the time she, she gets there, uh, which I can explain a bit later. Uh, but she will be making the point that, uh, that, uh, that basically there, there have been far too many uh, civilian casualties uh, as a result of the, uh, of the, of the war and that these have, have got to be very, very substantially reduced. I anticipate that she will be called on to defend Australia's vote in the UN General Assembly when we voted in favour of a ceasefire, and she will make that point. I think the uh, the point that, uh, that you will emphasise is that essentially Australia wants to seize a ceasefire as a series of humanitarian pauses that allow humanitarian aid to get in. And that will be a further message that uh, Penny Wong will be getting across, that she, uh, there must be unhindered uh, humanitarian aid because of the, the very dire conditions of the civilian population in Gaza at this point. Uh, I think when she gets to the West Bank, uh, she will probably be making the point to Mahmoud Abbas, uh, the head of the Palestinian Authority, that it's essential that, uh, that the authority reform itself so that it can play a, a more substantial role in in the region, and uh, and also that uh, um, uh, that uh, uh, essentially uh, it, the Palestinian Authority does what it can to reduce extremism uh, within within the region, uh, because we've already seen that there's uh, some uh, growing Hamas support in the West Bank. Uh, as well as, uh, at this stage, uh, still fairly strong Hamas support in, in Gaza itself. And you touched on South Africa, Ian. A major issue related to the war in Gaza today is the start of a case brought by South Africa in the International Court of Justice, arguing that Israel's prosecution of the war constitutes potential genocide of the Gaza-Palestinian population. Can you provide a little bit of background on this and what is the likelihood that the South African case will be successful? Well, first of all, we, we need to be clear that this is a case in the International Court of Justice, not in the International Criminal Court. So no Israelis are being uh, charged with any crimes. Uh, essentially, what South Africa is saying is that Israel's prosecution of the war is creating conditions in, in Gaza, which uh, potentially lead to, could, could lead to uh, uh, to, to a violation of the uh, of the human rights uh, uh, convention on genocide, and uh, essentially it will be making uh, the point that it wants the the international uh, court of justice to order what we would call an interim injun injunction to provide an interim order uh, calling on Israel to uh, to abstain from the, uh, the acts that it's carrying, currently carrying out to withdraw its forces from Gaza, Gaza and to allow humanitarian aid in, in an unrestricted way. Uh, while the actual case of whether Israel is guilty of genocide uh, is, is being decided, which could actually take many months and, and even years. Uh, at this stage, uh, Israel will obviously be arguing that it's, uh, it's, what it's doing is not potentially genocide, but the case is going to be only over two days, and uh, the indications are that the uh, Court of Justice will actually give a, a resolution, uh, will give its decision uh, sometime in the in the next uh, next few weeks. So it won't it won't be very long to wait. Uh, the the issue is, of course, that uh, if it's against Israel, I don't anticipate that Israel will will go along with it 
it will simply say that uh, that it, it disagrees with with the court's judgment and it, it, it that it's arg uh, acting within humanitarian law. Yeah, uh, so, sorry, uh, we yeah, so, have to, so, we've got get yeah, sorry about that, Ian. Uh, I was going to say, but uh, but that, that's really the problem with the uh, International Court of Justice. It can issue rulings which technically are binding on all states that are party to it, but it uh, it, it cannot enforce the, the rulings. So only about 50% of, uh, of states have, uh, have, that have been affected by rulings have actually gone along with those rulings. So it may not meet anything in, in the end. Certainly something to look at. We're getting a bit of a wrap up here, but I do want to quickly ask you, Ian, the many Houthi attacks on shipping in the Red Sea, they're having a significant impact on international trade as cargo ships between Europe and Asia avoid the Suez Canal and then take the long route around the Cape of Good Hope. The US has formed an international coalition of warships to patrol the Red Sea and defend commercial shipping. Do you think the coalition will be able to stop the Houthi attacks? Well, they seem to be having quite a bit of success at this point. Just overnight, there were uh, uh, there was a major barrage of, of Houthi attacks involving drones and various um, missiles, uh, which the uh, the warships uh, of several nations, obviously including the United States, uh, were all able to shoot down. So none of them were successful. None of them actually hit their targets. So they seem to be able to stop the uh, uh, the attacks. The other thing, of course, is that the United States has said that unless the Houthis stop the attacks, they will actually extend their operations into Yemen, which would mean knocking out their radar sites and also sites from which they are uh, they are sending these uh, these these weapons. So uh, I think it's it's possible for the Houthis to be contained. The question really is how long it, it, it takes to contain it and whether that has much of an effect uh, on the shipping overall. Um, it, over in the long term. At this stage, it's affected shipping for only about uh, six, six weeks so far. Ian Palmer, always appreciate your time and expertise. Thank you so much. You're welcome.